Yeah, no problem. Man. I know, I know. I know that, you know, you know. So we're starting uh with a little intro. So uh, here we go. Very little. I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi, <laughs> everyone. You're watching the Wrestle Rock. Podcast of season four. I am Johnny D, uh, and I am with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. How are you doing today, my friend? Yes, uh, and you uh, fine, and you? Yes, I'm going super great. And you know what? No, we have another wrestling guest. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Rip Roger. How are you doing today, my friend? <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here, li- I'm living the dream. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. So well, uh, before your career in wrestling, you were uh, a, a teacher, right? Uh, can you tell us about uh, this experience, you know? About teaching school? Yeah. Yeah. Hell, I, w- I was a football coach. I was teaching 7th and 8th grade at good old Union City, Indiana. I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. And then you're, you're coming in and out over there. Uh, okay. And then so... Uh, I was wrestling part time for Dick the Bruiser, the old Sheik, Nick Goulas, and anybody else who would have me because I was a total shit. And then uh, <laughs> I'm having trouble connecting, unstable internet connection. Okay, I'm not on Wi Fi. So anyway, uh, uh, no, so anyway, no one, one yeah, weekend yeah. I was, you understand I was uh, you. teaching school. Right. On a Friday night, I was Dick. I was uh, wrestling for Dick the Bruiser in okay. Danville, Illinois. Then I drove all night to work Kansas City TV, St. Joe, Missouri TV. And then uh, on Sunday, I worked wrestling at the Chase, the old thing they used to have on in the, okay. in the 70s uh, in St. Louis. And I wrestled uh, Flair and Mulligan. Uh, no. And then when that, when that shit happened, I come back to school and I told Fish lips, my principal. I said, uh, take my sick day. Just dock me because I'm quitting teaching right now because okay. I, I made more money in that weekend than I did uh, just playing wrestling than I did uh, teaching. And a couple of reader rats got on me and I had a good time there. So what the hell, right? I said, I'm in this wrestling full time. Shit, I got, I got uh, the, the world famous. I got the world. <laughs> famous wrestling photographer scott romer former dick the bruiser's uh son-in-law the man who's the world's greatest boxing and wrestling photographer he's got so many okay. awards he wears them on him and his pants fall down they're so heavy he's got so many awards on him but he he's he's uh he, he's here uh he's got a couple couple hot dates couple cold dates but but he's here anyway and he goes out to all the ex-boxers, uh, et cetera, okay. in Indianapolis every Thursday. How long have you done it? About 30 years, it seems yeah, like. Yeah. 30 years he's been going. Three every years. Thursday night, uh, or Thursday afternoon, they all go out and tell lies, tell stories about all the women they're getting because they're really only getting about 12 apiece. And that's it. But he's he's head honcho. Uh, but he's world renowned photographer Scott Roman. He's got a book out, you can get his book, and you can get his book from Amazon, just like you can get my book on sale. And when it was my life on both ends of the camera, so you got Google, all, all you got to do is Google Scott Romer, it is on Amazon. But to see just how successful I really am, it's all over Google. Google my name, Scott Romer. Who the hell is Cut Romer? Can Ooh, we? Uh, Rumor legend in his mind, man. <laughs> uh, we've only been drinking a little bit, so what the hell, right? <laughs> oh, go ahead, my friend. Okay, uh, what? 
what year did you officially start wrestling in 1974 or 1975 oh no 77 was my first match okay okay uh, that, hey don't believe nothing you see on the internet yeah, yeah. because uh sometimes uh wiki and uh, imdb uh, was uh, was horrible for information yeah. you know And I uh, would like to discuss about. Uh, are you Chinese? Are you J Japanese, sir? Are you Japanese? No, no, French no Canadian. You're French Canadian. You're French Canadian. Uh, my, from my, I, my my fault. It's a little tiny um, phone that I'm seeing, and I so no I, problem. I apologize. No problem. I heard an accent. Accent. Okay. Very good. Saul Creechman was my wrestling name. <laughs> my uncle was Eddie the Brain Creechman. No, it's a kayfabe. What is it? <laughs> But that was I was sorry. Oh, that's Richman. not the, the that's hey, not Eddie hey. the Brain Creechman. But but, but, he, but he was married to Dick the Bruiser's daughter, so you know he was long stroking that's really of oh yeah. nice, interesting. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh can you uh tell us about the formation of the, the stable uh convertible blondes? Uh, which also included, uh, of course, uh, Pez uh, Watley and Gary Royal at uh, Angelo Puffle's uh, ICW. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we started in 1979. I was there four okay. years. I was I was a I was a part owner. It was a okay. three Puffos, uh, me, George Weingroff, and then Roop Orton, and okay. uh, let's see, and Garvin, and Garvin came in. Okay. So we ran we ran every day, sometimes two shows a night. I remember I remember on two Saturdays we actually had three shows going on a Saturday night. So okay. we had so we had wow. We, well, it, it was funny they called us an outlaw territory. Okay. We had four, we had 14 TV markets. That's a lot of markets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. In early yeah. in early 1986, you had a feud in CWE with the Dutch Mantle. Do you consider him one of the most influential men in professional wrestling? Do what now? Are you talking about uh, Dutch, Dutch Mantle? Do you consider uh, Dutch Mantle? One of the most influential influential men in Pro professional wrestling. wrestling, or I know that you are uh, near than Jim Cornette, or but have you uh, considered uh, Dutch Mantle as uh, one of the the most influential men? That, one of the, the most one, influential one of the most men. Yeah, that's the question. Oh. Well, uh, he, he's been at it a long time, but uh, uh, hell, I, and he's been a booker. I'll give him credit for that. Uh, I wrestled with him for Nick Goulas in the 70s against him and in, in Memphis. And then he's got a podcast on, and uh, I've been on there with, with James. Okay. And Dutch, D Dutch likes to steal stories that he wasn't at and, uh, and tell, tell – uh, Long, long fibs, exaggerate. Well, he calls them wrestling stories, like Bobby Jaggers, where you know they're not the truth, but they're. He can take a five-minute story and ma and make it into an hour. He's such a great storyteller. <laughs> so, so he's been around. He's a, he's a great pro. He knows the goddamn business. So, uh, yeah, he is a legend. Okay. And uh, in 1991, you wrestled in WCW against. Uh, a fucker called uh, Owen Hart. <laughs> a fucker um, called Owen Hart. Owen Hart, yeah. What do you take away from this experience, my friend? <laughs> okay, uh, I worked for uh, for Stu in in yeah. '88. In '88, so for this yeah, wrestling, yeah. Calgary. Right? Yeah, yeah. So all the boys are out there. So Owen, he was the youngest one. They had all those boys in the family. Yeah. And they were all, they all had different personalities. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. You're like shaking your head. From the oldest one, Smith, to all the way down. And, the, and Owen was the baby. Then they had all the girls. And they were the ones who had the wrestler boyfriends or the wrestler uh, uh, husbands. 
And then even uh, the oldest one was married to uh, BJ and he had BJ's gym. Yeah. So I would, I trained at his gym every day when I was trained, there was two little boys there and one of them was Teddy Hart and one of them was Harry Smith. And Harry oh. had the hair, Harry had the hair down to his shoulders. Okay. And then, uh, but Teddy was the, Teddy was the crazy one. He would be uh, swinging off the chandeliers and pole vaulting in the, uh, uh, in the, in the weight room and everything. And his dad would just shake his head. <laughs> 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 okay, Mr. So, Roger. Uh, yeah, Mr. Roger, you re- go ahead. Are you okay? okay? You wrestled m- multiple times against the Fun Family. I mean, Dory uh, or uh, Terry. Uh, what was your Terry? Rec- Fun- t- no, Terry Funk was. He was my favorite wrestler. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, the best televised match I ever saw televised was him and Ric Flair in that in that I Quit match. Nice. But uh, I, I, and here I was, a uh, just an old fan wrestler. But I think the the when you're a fan, you make the best wrestlers because you love the wrestling business. Yeah. And uh, at the end there, when uh, Terry Terry lost a match and blah blah blah, but then somebody interfered. He makes a comeback, and him and Flair. It was uh, it was just uh, I got really emotional about it. So he, Terry Funk, when when I was in uh, uh, Austria and Germany, I, I was staying working for Otto Vance, and me and Regal lived lived together. Uh, okay. Lord Regal, and it's like Snooker come in for a big show, and Terry Funk, and he was over in our caravan, okay, in in uh, in, in, in Hanover. Okay. So he was drinking and just telling stories. And there was me and Regal and Max Payne there. And we just sat there and mesmerized and just, just, just shut up and listen to him just fucking talk. And it was one of the great, it, it was one of the greatest night of night of my life. I, it, was wow. just, it was just awesome. Awesome. It, he was a- you're just sitting there. I'm just sitting there like a little fucking kid and he's telling them stories and I'm biting on every word. Right. It was such, it was It would seem like as a uh, Terry Funk was a fantastic person because when we are discussed with uh, a couples of guests, it's always the same thing. So uh, Terry Funk changed not just the um, the wrestling vision, but also in uh, in the backstage vision also, and he had a good relation with every uh, man in the backstage so it was that, a gentleman uh, that that's that that's uh, uh, a sad thing that he passed away you know and well he had a he had a hell of a life put it that way yeah yeah you know, he had a hell of a life not I, i never heard anybody say a bad word about terry funk yeah exactly exactly uh, do you remember why uh, did you leave wcw in 1993 I left, no, uh, 94, 95, let me see. See, I was working, I'd been on the road for how many years? Two years I didn't wrestle in the States. I was in England, Aus- England, Austria, Germany, Japan three times, uh, Korea, South Africa, uh, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, wherever. Uh, Worldwide. <laughs> Why is it? Yeah, uh, I, I went to the Maritimes. I went to the Maritimes for Rene Dupre's dad four times in the summer times because it was, it was, it was laid back and I got to be sort of like the boss and I didn't have to really do anything. And I called it America's 1950s. It was so laid back and it was just good old wrestling fans. Yeah. So, so I always loved, uh, I always loved working there. Big period, you know, and- always oh, talking about WCW, uh, So I worked for uh, for Watts, for Ole. I got when I was in uh, when I was in Germany. I got Regal and Max Payne to uh, to contact, to write Bill Watts, and I got them jobs in WCWC. And then Regal got fit in Fit Finley, and then uh, and then he got Dave Taylor in uh, too to get runs in WCW. And uh, see, I was actually doing uh, 
uh, I was running developmental towns for Ole Anderson. So like about four or five days a month, I get, and so all the stars was coming to, uh, uh, I lived in Indiana, so I was running uh, shows in Kentucky and Indiana. And all the big, the, the, the guys might come in for four days in a row. It'd be the same crew. And uh, anybody on, anybody and everybody would, would be on there. And uh, so <laughs> I would work the first match, but then I'd be the promoter. I'd get my mileage money, per diem money. And then uh, Ole would say, you might as well take 300 out of the till to stick in your pocket for extra expenses. <laughs> and then, but I'd work the first match. I'd announce, I'd get the jackets. Uh, I'd be the timekeeper, all that stuff. And you get paid for each job, right? <laughs> and then, I know okay. that you have been uh, involved in the OVW. So uh, are you proud uh, you have trained, uh, You have trained such as Batista, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, John Cena, and more, you know? Well, the, the guys that were, the, the superstars that they signed, they were supposed to make it and make money. Mm -hmm. But I got 70 guys' jobs, uh, wrestlers, uh, girl wrestlers, guy wrestlers, managers, etc. These were guys that started in the beginner's class. They weren't supposed to be a star, like Santino. Like uh, Mike Mondo, the Spirit Squad, like uh, Serena Deeb, like JTG, uh, like the Beast, and the, the list goes on and on. The guys got runs uh, in WWF or WWE, whatever you want to call it, and they actually started out in the beginners class. So those were the guys that weren't supposed to make it, and uh, a lot of the guys that was signed big money to train. They never, they didn't make it. And here's guys coming in off the street and they sit down and shut up and didn't act like they were over, did what they was told. And they learned how to, how to be a wrestler and got a job and what the hell, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. We would like to hear your opinions on the new OVW now owned by uh, the great All Snow. I don't really know much about it. I had one of the girls on uh, okay. my pod, on my podcast last week, uh, Hollywood or what you, Haley or ho yeah. Hollywood Haley or whatever. And uh, she's a second generation wrestler. Yeah. So she was on there. So, so she was talking shit. Uh, <laughs> I was a business. I was a business. I was a part owner for 20 some years in OVW. I just didn't advertise it. It was Danny Davis. He started it. He founded it. Then I was his business partner. And then, and then later, and then when we got the WWE thing, then Jimmy come in. So uh, there, it was the three. It was the three of us was what it was. But we didn't. Uh, I didn't get on there and talk about it or anything like that. But yeah, they. Uh, Al's doing a great job in Louisville. He's got the netflix thing out and uh uh hell we'd been oh what the hell is going on what the hell is going on can you try to call him are you there Oh, he's back. <laughs> 